Hi, my name is Pierre Schiller. Welcome to my channel. I am a 3D animator and VFX compositor, as well as a Blender Foundation certified trainer. In our previous video, we presented a lot of topics, including the stylized shader reconstruction in Blender's Eevee. I also released our training character, Fixie, to practice the techniques learn along with other foundation methods and asset files in part 1 and 2. You can get the full 1 hour training video for part 3 or 4 in my gum road. Thank you for your support with this series. The Guilty Gear characters have been evolving with each new release of the game. Iconic poses are part of what makes a character memorable. For example, Jam's fighting style uses a lot of palm hits. This is also reflected on her story as a chef. In Japan, there are specialized artists paid specifically to create memorable color palettes for characters. The correct combination of shapes, volume, silhouettes, cloth design, and colors make the character's personality clearly readable. Character design, iconic pose, and color palette are the secret ingredients to create memorable experiences in any story such as Arc System's latest game, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. But no matter what character you design, you have to have control of the way it's going to be lit. As an ex softimage user I am, I decided to bring you the topics that almost no one talks about but still prove useful when creating a stylized look for your character. We review the official GTC 2015 conference and what makes the distinctive style of the Guilty Gear shader. And it's no surprise that you not only have to create the shader, but the complete workflow as well. Take Jacko's iconic pose for example, from concept drawing to 3D posing and animation. Part of the iconic identity are sprites or an image sequence display in tiles played back by UV displacement at shader level. Fireballs, magic explosions, and other accessory hits are drawn to a single image like we see in the red square. The size of the UVs is determined to scroll up and down to play back in a single long polygon as you can see with these two characters. We will take Soul's emblematic fireburn and we will draw it and use it inside Photoshop and Blender. Different hits have different animation sprites. Add a bloom effect and the special ability looks spot on. This is the capture from Blender's viewport. This is going to be our goal for this short 9 minute exercise. Remember, the YouTube version will show a few minutes along the training for demo purposes only. If you want the full training, check the links in the video description below. How many sprites do you recognize in this combo? Okay, maybe Elfield is just too fast. Let's just fragment this to a 25%, okay? And try to read the line of action and the possible frame count when she uses the blasts and hits. If you've come this far in the video, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't miss part 4 when it's uploaded. I would also like to mention that we are exploring the effects and shaders from a video game to be applied to animation in general. At the end of the video, I will talk about the Unity Chan shader, uploading the models, sharing them in 3D, and other stylized topics like skin shading. Beware this is content for mature audiences. Okay, that was a heartfelt sprite, and the onomatopoeia are surely counting as a sprite. Did you see all the rose petals flying and disappearing? Those combos were fantastic. In the next version of the game, Elfeld got an outfit change and also new combos. Try identifying the sprites in the following sequences. As you can see, there are a lot of in-game cinematics which make heavy use of sprites. Now that we all know this, it's time for us to reconciliate with sprite effects to be used in our stylized animations forever. Following the same idea, decals are simple geometry to display a transparent steel image for emotion, shapes, or effects. Please notice the red arrows for the moment. We will come back to the green circles later. A decal image with transparency is placed over a duplicated mesh of a specific polygon part of the model, and they are used to show damage to the player in this example. Imagine if you need to show an emotional range of embarrassment in a character. You may add the classic decal, like a drop of sweat, directly over the character. 
you can also use decals on weapons and basically anywhere you need a graphical idea of something. Let's see how we can do that in Blender. I already have a plane with adjusted UVs. Press F2 to rename this decal directly in the viewport. If we check the alpha channel in the image viewer, we can see this image has transparency. Note how we are using the same shader setup than the sprites. Enter edit mode and adjust your UV coordinates to the decal of your interest. One image may have different separate images to save space in disk. You can relocate the UVs or deform them according to the image of your interest. There is only one issue though. If we try to place this decal on top of a hair manually, we will fail positioning it correctly. But we can use Blender Snap to Faces option from the Snap menu. Click on Faces option. Click on Faces option and mark Align Rotation to Target, so we can see the plane aligned to the hair correctly. And when we move it, it will jump directly to the face we see immediately in the viewport. Keep in mind this is viewport oriented to front. Let's see how it looks from the side. Perfection. If you enter edit mode, maybe we can have the classic notes bleed for what's coming in the last part of the video. Who knows? Don't forget to turn off the snappings or your UVs will move clunky using the G key. Press B to box select and select the lower vertices, then press G, Y, and this will access constraint your movement vertically. Cool! So now you know how to create stylized animate decals over your mesh. And this not only limits to emotion, letters, or damage hits, it can also be used for creating little details on your mesh, such as the bolts in Elfeld's dress. Now let's check the stylized shader for this model. In part 2 we check... To finish this last part, we may adjust the color curves with preset looks or simply adjust each RGB channel individually. Now let's talk about smears, which in 3D would be represented as additional geometry, texture and rig to deform and stretch for a few frames in the animation. We can say it's a stylized motion blur for 2D animation. Let's go back to those green circles from before. Within the mesh, the characters have hit meshes. These need to have correctly oriented normals to appear flat when they are scaled or morphed in the game. Here's a short sequence where we can identify a smear in the attack. This is definitely what conveys our eyes that the models are 2D. In reality, they are detailed rigged meshes ready to be deformed for as much as 2 or 3 frames. They can bend, scale, and have full controls appearing as individual objects with morph shapes for additional deformation. Best practices for them is to deform them using bones, and make them per frame, and there are a lot of stretchy bones. A function Blender knows too well to rig. Speaking of advantages, key mesh in Blender is the next big thing to create smears using direct geometry. Again, I am explaining the advantages of Blender as a tool for animation workflow. Please do not rant about whether this can be exported for a game engine or not. I'm just presenting you the marvelous advantages for sculpting, animated, and artistic appeal effects in general. Keyframe Mesh stores geometry data blocks per scene frame, kind of what shape keys do with only one mesh, except this will work using the grease pencil timeline for the geometry present in the scene. You can animate the formations frame by frame. This function will probably arrive after Blender 2.9, so we will have to wait a little bit more. Let's review normals one more time. Normals can break or make your model believable. I presented different models from Softimage ported to Blender for the correct representation of the light hitting the normals in the mesh. You can see the shadows jump from one position to another. This effect is desired as it blocks the light from specific angles of the face. There are artifacts in this character's mouth and nose. Compare Axel's face before and after editing the normals. I will make the world background black. 
and I will add a solidify modifier to, to create the dark outline in the character. Change the material index offset to 1. Change offset from minus 1 to 1. Increase the size of thickness. The offset material which we marked with number 1 is the one directly following your main material. Lastly, check flip normals. Here's a look of what the outline material contains, which is basically a base color multiplied by the SSS through a low emission node. This way I am using the same texture colors in the solidify modifier of the mesh. Select the body and shift select the face, then press Ctrl L to link attributes. Select modifiers from the list. Time to jump to edit the face. Enter edit mode and try selecting only the cheeks and nose vertices. If you select one, then press L, you will see that it selects the entire head. This is not what we want. Select the single vertex again and now press Ctrl plus on the numpad. Your selection will grow, but again, you will end up selecting the complete head. I would like you to see how the normals disperse through different directions and in order for us to have a solid flat surface when the light hits, every normal should be pointing forward, like in Axel's face reference we saw before. Go to Edit, Preferences and go to the Add-on tab. Click Install. and locate your abnormal zip file with the add-on. Click on Install Add-on. You will see some options for the sensibility of the tool. For now, leave everything on default. Press N and locate the BNPR Abnormal tab panel. Click on Start Normal Editor. Now, at first, all of the settings can be daunting, but they can be compressed. Let's take our time to read the instructions from the shortcuts lists. Let's press Z for circle selection and then let's select the facial vertex we are interested in. Also, notice how the command list changed based on the tool's context. Use open and close brackets to grow or shrink the circle selection radius. Continue selecting the vertices around the cheeks and nose. Fantastic! Now we have our specific vertices selected. Let's end the selecting session by right clicking in the mouse. To understand what we are looking to do with the tool, let's look at how this specialized normal editing tool used to work in Softimash. The user will type 0.1 in the Y axis and continue pressing the button to keep adding 0.1 to the current value of the normal's positive degree of rotation. So when you move the sunlight which acts as a parallel rays, the surface of the face will be lit at once or shadowed at once. There is a complete set of documented functions for this Softimage tool, which is my background for how we will work in Blender. Now, expand the axis alignment. Sure enough, we are interested in aligning the normals to the positive Y axis, like the green axis in the world points to. Just as a test, press minus Y axis and see what happens. The normals were pointing down. Okay, let's undo that. This means that Y is up and down and not forward like we originally thought. This little box lets you increment the rotations gradually just like we saw in Softimage. So the obvious choice is that Z is forward for the normals, so we press the plus Z button. As you can see now all the normals point forward from the face, just like the Axel's picture reference.
exit edit mode and now the light correctly illuminates the face. Awesome! We can also copy the simplify normal from basic geometry objects and correct the arms and other parts of the body with the BNPR abnormal add-on. Compare the before and after images right here with Elfelt and you will clearly spot the difference in the face. But in our case, we just want to have a regular driver switch and if you switch it to zero, you will get your fleshy tones and they will react to the light accordingly. And of course, if you press one, then you will get the flat shading. Now, a lot of you have been asking me about what do we do when we port our models from Blender to Unity? Do we have a better tune shader in Unity? And the answer is yes, you need to install and download and follow the directions that are going to be here in the link to download the Unity package for Unity Chan, okay? That's the only tune shader you will ever need right now. There are other OSL tune shaders that are out there in the Unity market, which are really awesome, but this one is free. It's, I mean, you can use it right out of the box, and let's see how it works. So you select your Unity Chan. First of all, obviously create a shader, just like we do in Blender, create a shader and assign to that shader the uh, shading method, which in this case will be the Unity Chan, and then select the Unity Chan material shaded gradient map. What it's going to do is that you're going to assign different textures to the different uh, uh, slots, different um, uh, texture spaces, and then you're going to mark that ch little checkbox that you see right there to uh, make the effect appear. For example, I'm just making this checkbox for the outliner and now I can decide on the color. Let's see, I want to switch this into a pinkish color for the outline on the chest because I brought my character with different parts, with different separate parts. Now you will not have this problem because I have created a basic Fixie uh, file, FBX file, blend file, and OBJ file which you can directly import into your projects without having to worry if one part is assigned with either material or not because that's a flat shader, uh, it's a flat texture, it's not uh, dynamically painted, it's not dynamically uh, working to choose and change colors. So anyways, you have it right here, please, you can review the video, put pause, check out the settings, but it's working amazingly. And obviously if you rotate the light, which is a parallel light, which is the sunlight, uh, you can see the effects uh, triggered off right there. So the shaders that are assigned to the other parts of the body are not reacting, but the one in the chest is reacting perfectly. And so on and so forth. You can continue to add other different shaders. So this has been everything that I wanted to show you in this part 3 of 4. And the next one is going to be our wrapping up. And we're going to talk a lot about expressions and drivers. So until then, I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.